No, I wasn't wrong when she caught the fish. Here, hold it up here so we can get it right across. We can see the, mm, the belly on this thing. This weighs over 25 pounds. Oh, that is a huge one, 43 inches long. Right. Now, what happened when he was gone? The flag went up. And I flew. Flew out there. I sure did. That northern pike could well be the largest northern taken in Michigan in 1986. It was taken right here, Houghton Lake, Tip Up Town, USA, this past weekend. Do we have fish stories for you? So stay tuned. We're going to Tip Up Town. It's Thursday night time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodlands of the north, it's history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties we look around again At all that waits the sportsman in the state of Michigan And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in the state of Michigan Sure, it's a carnival. Tip Up Town USA is an event for the whole family. On the south shore of Houghton Lake for two weekends in January, the community puts on a winter carnival that rivals none anywhere in the country. Ice fishing, snowmobiling, carnival rides, games for the kids, activities of all kinds for all ages, food, cotton candy, popcorn, beverages, a beer tent, games for adults. Attractions, helicopter rides, parachutes, stunt flying, hang gliding, you'll find it all at Tip Up Town USA. But what is everybody jumping up and down about? Well, what else would attract so much attention? Fish, of course. <laughs> Little Chad Alberts from Houghton Lake had the largest stringer of perch and the crowd loved it. Where do these fish come from? Well, all over the lake, and a surprising number within close walking distance of the Tip Up Town site. We packed up the camera on a snowmobile and skimmed over the ice to check on fishermen who were enjoying this midwinter thaw that seemed to improve fishing. Got some action over here. Look at this, the first pike of the day. You guys, that looks like a keeper, just barely. Yes, it is, sir. What, what's your name? Dan Metcalf, from, from Midland, from Midland, Michigan. From Midland? You guys all from Midland? Right. Yeah. Who was the guy who, who landed this one? Was I. Oh, that was you, Dan? Yeah, yeah, it was. Quite a battle it put up, or what? Yeah, it wasn't bad. I gave it a couple tugs, and it uh, looked like it was starting to hang up a few times on the weed, so I backed off a little bit, gave him a couple more tugs, and brought him up to the ice. This is the salad you brought up with him, yeah, huh? Yeah, it was. Well, great. You guys uh, like this windless type of tip-up? Yeah, that's not bad. We seem to think it brings more action into the area that we're fishing in, so we try to center it amongst the tip-ups. You guys fish Houghton Lake often? Yeah, it's every year. We bring the shanty up at least a month and a half, two months at a time. How do you do? You must do well or uh, you wouldn't we, come back. We did pretty good last year, so we thought we'd try it again up in the same area again. Anglers found pike all over the lake this weekend. No particular part didn't produce fish. Even the high traffic areas saw plenty of action. Whose is it? Whose is it? I'm Tom Stanfield. Tom, did you catch it? No, my Uncle Doug here did. Come on, Uncle Doug, pick this fish up. This is a whopper. Wow. How big is it, Uncle Doug? 32 inches. 32 inch pike must weigh about 10 pounds? Seven and a half. Seven and a half, oh. Why is it that I always overestimate the size? Yeah, I don't must know. be a fisherman, huh? <laughs> hey, well, tell me about this thing. Hold it up there with two hands. So we can see, so the camera can see how big this is. Look at the size of that. He's fresh. Yeah, we just caught him about an hour ago. What were you using for bait? Sucker minnows. Very big? Oh, about 10 inch. Good size one then. Yeah. Right. Wait, heck, you're right here, right off the tip up town site. There's snowmobiles, all kinds of people. Just lucky. It's the best place to fish? I don't know. That's just where we stop. Where, <laughs> where, where are you from? Farawa. You fish this lake often? Tip up town every year. Lots of lucky anglers come here every January for tip up town. Some live here year round, and for others, it's their first time. Well, look at this. We have a regular encampment here. We got a good sized pike on the ice. We have a fella here who's going to tell us what this is all about. Are you having a convention or what? Well, you bet. Did you catch this? Yeah, we got him this 
about 10 minutes ago. Well, here, pick this thing up. This is a, that's a dandy pike. Yeah, it actually seems like the, the, the people are doing well here today. Yeah, getting a lot of pike. You you fish out here often? First time I've ever been here. Is that where you're from? Uh, down by Alma. Oh, what's your name? Daryl Roush. Well, Daryl, <laughs> you have a real good impression of Houghton Lake here with this, I'll tell you. Uh -huh. Well, you guys come up and put up this tent? Yeah, yesterday. Well, Let's give me a tour of it. This is quite something. I mean, this is not your run-of-the-mill fish shanty by any stress. Wow, pallets on the floor. I don't know what you can see in here, OJ, but we have stereo music, <laughs> a stove. Boy, you, you sleep out here? Yeah, we stayed out last night and stayed nice and toasty warm. Oh, wow, this is something else. Tent camping on the ice is a different experience, but a real adventure. You know, the mild weather was welcomed by anglers, and I'm sure it was welcomed by the deer herd in the Houghton Lake area, too. We stopped by the DNR's deer research station west of town, where I asked John Nellist if this midwinter thaw helped the deer or actually created more problems. For the past couple of years, John, these deer have had it easy. And even this past fall, Gary Bouchel says the, the acorn crop was so good throughout the north that the deer were fat and they can handle a rough winter. Now, how do you size that up right now? Well, we did have a good acorn crop. Uh, the deer have been able to get into the acorns so far, and now with this thaw, it, in a way, it's going to probably keep them from digging up uh, acorns that are still available to them. But it does give them a break from the from the severe winter. Of course, when it thaws like this and puts a crust on the snow, it puts the food under their feet, but yet they can move around more to browse, right? That's true. Which is better? Which is worse? Uh, the acorns would be uh, more nutritional for the deer, without a doubt and with a heavy crust, they're gonna be unavailable to them. So it's sort of a toss up as to whether this break in the weather was all that beneficial? Well, I think uh, in the long run, it's probably gonna be more beneficial than uh, detrimental. You've lived up here a long time. You've seen a lot of winters. What do your bones tell you about this winter? Is it gonna be rough on the deer? Uh, it's hard to say. It's too early to say. If we have a uh, mild March, the deer are going to come out in good shape. However, uh, we've, uh, we're long overdue for a hard winter, and it could be here this year. You feel like one's coming? Uh, we're due for one. Do you think the starvation losses will be moderate, great, small? Well, if we have a hard March, I think we're going to lose a lot of deer. It's going to be a high mortality. So that's what we keep our eyes on, yes. starting the 1st of March. That's right. going to tell the story. But right now, the deer are in what kind of condition? Deer are doing fine now. They're... Uh, They've had a rough uh, December and part of January, but they're still in, they're still got a lot of reserves and they're in fairly good shape right now. Good news so far. Right. These deer are healthy so far, but I wonder what they think about all the activity down on Houghton Lake. You know, these snowmobiles scare the deer, but what about the fish? Tip-up fishermen are always complaining about the snowmobiles that come too close. They've used snowmobiles as an excuse as to why they don't catch more fish for a long time. But this past weekend makes you wonder. In the middle of all this noise and walking and activity, pike were coming through the ice. More fish, bigger fish than ever before, and there were more people. Some 50,000 people are attracted to Tip-up Town. It's a winter carnival with something for everybody and fish that were almost jumping right out of the holes. What a weekend at Tip Up Town. I have never had more fun, been more comfortable, and seen more fish than I did this past weekend. Now, what is this weekend going to be like at Tip Up Town, or all around the state for that matter? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, and I never have been able to predict it. And look what we came up with from Tip Up Town at Houghton Lake for our trophy book. This is the best catch of crappies, and you got the best this catch of bluegills. And you got a, how big is this crappie? Uh, one pound, five ounces, 13 and a half inches. You have a corner on the fishing here. What, what's your, what's your trick? Well, no trick to it, just hey. get out there and fish. I tell you, you're gonna have a crowd following you every minute, looking at everything you do. Yeah, I set these down. Can you set them down? <laughs> okay, set them down here on the ice. <laughs> That's a lot of bluegill and a lot of crappie taken on this one weekend. There's two more first place in that bucket. Two more first place right there. A couple more bluegill. These, these rock bass and pumpkin seed. First place. 
Rollins Simons of Houghton Lake won a power ice auger for each of his first place fish, a double winner, plus his winning 15 pound stringer of crappies and stringer of bluegill. His secret was fishing Mora jigs off the south shore. And now for that biggest bluegill of the weekend. How long is this bluegill? Did you measure the length? Yeah, uh, uh, 11 inches. 11 inches, one pound, four ounces. Right. A master angler fish, a Stroh's trophy winner. You fish Houghton Lake a lot for fish like this? I sure do. So you, I, I love is, it. This is just run of the mill weekend for you? No, yeah, it's <laughs> just, just a normal weekend. I, I love fishing up here. Ray Evil Sizer should love Houghton Lake. His master angler bluegill won him a power auger. Now let's take a look at the weekend's biggest walleye. Well, this is the biggest walleye is seven pounds what? Seven pounds, three and a half ounces. That's a huge walleye for any place in Michigan. It sure is. You, you, you fish Houghton Lake a lot? I fish Houghton Lake during tip of town and we come up for a week in July. How's the fishing in July for walleye? It's not too bad. Most of them that come through the or that come out of the lake during the summer months are 16, 17 inch mm -hmm. category. I haven't seen one like this ever come out of this it's, lake. Oh, I know that's <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. So you figure you were just lucky? Yes. Are you? Oh, uh, I was. You've got to be at the right, right place at the right time, time. That's to, the to catch story. something like this. Always There's a lot of luck involved. Where, where is the right place? Roger Miley from Ann Arbor won the power auger for the biggest walleye, but Dave Alexander from Houghton Lake took the honors for his 17 and a half pound stringer of walleye. Do you pull fish out of there like this regularly? Uh, pretty regular, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. What's your name? Dave Alexander. Dave Alexander from where? Um, from Houghton Lake here. Okay, tell you what, we all got to go fishing together sometime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys can take me. Okay. That's great. Great, Great walleye, but now let's take a look at that huge oh, northern pike. And alive. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people who don't think that this could have come from Houghton Lake. Oh, yes, it did. I mean, you know, that kind of question if this came out of the freezer that was taken out of Canada or someplace. No deal, huh? No, right out of this lake. And where was it? Hard. Where were you fishing? I mean, you don't have to. Not too far off. Right off the tip up town site? Now, Marilyn caught it, and you didn't, Cecil. Well, that's just the breaks of the game. That's he what that is. Hook. I, I he was, baited the hook? Sure. I made a supply run, and I come back, there was the fish. Uh, you weren't even around? No, I wasn't oh. around. She caught the fish. Here, hold it up here so we can get it right across. We can see the, mm, the belly on this thing. This weighs over 25 pounds. Oh, that is a huge one, 43 inches long. Right. Now, what happened when he was gone? The flag went up. And I flew. Flew out there. I sure did. And what did you do? Well, I just saw the line was going out, so I let it run a little bit. Thought I'll let him tire out, but he wasn't very tired. He wasn't? Put his head right up through the hole. No kidding? Yeah. You mean he just, just like pulling in a little one? Right. And you slipped him out under the ice all by yourself? Nothing to it. Oh! <laughs> How long did it take? How long was the battle? Maybe a minute. That's an incredible story. I know, a good fish story. <laughs> yeah, it is a good fish story. Well, you are a, whoa! <laughs> this is a big one, you bet. 25 pounds, a master angler fish could very well be the largest northern pike of 1986. To you, Marilyn Heinzelman of Wyoming, congratulations. Thank you. Boy, Thank that you. is a beaut. This weekend, more big fish, more prizes, and maybe you'll join Marilyn Heinzelman in the trophy book. New elk survey was completed last week up in the Pigeon River Country state game area. It looks like there are about 950 animals, which is 10 more than they counted last year at this time after the first hunt. Gary Bouchelle, who's the regional uh, director of the wildlife division up there, says don't expect, though, even though the herd's in good shape, drastic increases in the number of permits. He says it's up to the DNR now, especially the wildlife, to fine-tune the quotas of how many of each sex and age of elk are to be taken. Vermont turkeys are scheduled for release. Uh, the birds will be coming in from Vermont the end of next week, and they will be released up in the Maple River State Game area, about 25 miles north of Lansing. A travel ban, by the way, has got a, a pheasant release followed up for Ottawa County. Out in Kansas, they're trapping up to 200 wild pheasants for us to put into Ottawa County. By the way, this outdoor reminder this week, do not forget, you've got to have your name and address on your tip-ups. 
Speaking of tip-ups, Bob, we have a couple articles in the Digest here on tip-up fishing and, and a new feature, the Christmas tip-up. Uh, it's a fictional story by Brian Cole. And it is just delightful. How about a big one that got away, though? <laughs> well, it's a delightful story, so, though. Some questions from our mailbag, Bob. One for you uh, by Walty Kugara from Detroit. He says, my brother is interested in buying land or a cottage within 150 miles of Detroit. Price range of 30 grand. Any suggestions? About the best suggestion I can give him is Clare County, probably, northern Isabella County. Mm -hmm. now, I talked to Jack Tice from Mid-State Land Company, and he says you can get 40s up there for the $20,000 price range, 80s around 30000 and there are plenty of cottages from twenty to 30000 So that sounds like it'd be ideal. Of course, Wally, if your brother wants to drive a little further north, uh, all the way to Ontonagon in the UP, you can get some great buys on land and cabins. That's true. Further north you go, though. Drive sure. time is a problem, though. It sure is. Another letter, too, from Ron Thompson of Pelkey, Michigan. Fred, for you, he says, In ice fishing, you usually catch pike, perch, and bluegills. But in my years of fishing, I have never caught, heard of, or seen a bass taken in the winter. Is bass fishing very poor in the winter, or am I using the wrong kind of bait? I usually use worms or minnows. Well, Ron, that's, that's good news to me. No, you're actually using the right kind of bait. No problem there. Bass congregate by themselves oftentimes in the winter. They go off in the deeper water and don't congregate with the other fish. But the reason I'm so happy you haven't caught any is that bass season closes December 31st in Michigan. <laughs> so actually, you're a lot better off not catching any until Memorial Day when the season <laughs> reopens. That's, that's good advice, Fred. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Trap shooters, skeet shooters, you know how difficult it is to break a string of clay pigeons. Let's see if you can answer this question about a real winner here in our outdoor quiz. What's the most clay targets ever shot by one person in one hour? Thomas H. Kreckman of Cresco, Pennsylvania set a new record in 1975. Using five shotguns and four loaders, he fired at 2,291 targets, that's more than 38 per minute, missing only 387 for a total of 1,904 broken targets. In January, it's Tip Up Town USA at Houghton Lake, but in June, it's the Outdoor Fair at the high school right across from the Tip Up Town site. We have a summer Tip Up Town that features hunting, fishing, and the shooting sports. Now, one of the big attractions has been the Muzzle Loaders Village. It's an authentic living village with tents, lean tos, and teepees, muzzle loaders in colonial dress. Guy and Evelyn Swan from Lansing have an even bigger and better muzzleloaders village planned for 1986, which includes a special fashion show in the exhibit hall on Saturday. And behind the high school at the shooting range, you can try shooting a muzzleloader yourself, or you can browse, talk to these modern pioneers. It's a, a slice of Michigan's trapping and fur trading history right here at the outdoor fair and of course you can do a little bartering for some of the crafts that the muzzleloaders make and have for sale and part of the outdoor fair is on the school grounds but the other part is on the lake with activities at the Limberlost dock right across the street now last year a muzzleloaders group from saginaw demonstrated their voyagers cargo canoe in the water well, on saturday a replica of a birch bark canoe it's 26 foot long she weighs a little over 600 pounds and that, and uh, it's a north canoe. It's what they usually use to uh, run uh, the, mainly the rivers, or uh, if they had a courier they had to run, well, then they'd take this light canoe. But it would carry about 2,500 pounds of cargo and uh, six to eight men. Yeah. Well, it is a replica, yes, you, know, you were yes. saying, too, that uh, you've taken it out on the Great Lakes? Yeah, we've had her on uh, darn near all the Great Lakes. And at uh, in 82, we run it from uh, Ojibwe Island in Saginaw, Michigan, up to uh, Mackinac on a four and a half day voyage, or a little over 240, 260 miles. By the way, we went you know, along the shore. We'd run about a mile offshore. And you were paddling it, but you yes. also have a sail here, yes. too, kind of a crude sail. Yeah, it's a regular, just a, a square sail, 10 by 10. It'll be you know, equivalent to a, oh, 100 square feet. And uh, like the old ones used to use, it, it mounts right down uh, in this strut here. And we sailed uh, 82 miles uh, with it to one day. The guys, they liked that real well. <laughs> Come nighttime, they didn't want to paddle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you had them spoiled. Yeah, they wanted to wait for another wind to come up. Oh, this is a fant fantastic boat right here. Mm -hmm. That's a nice canoe. Along with the muzzle loaders, the outdoor fair features an on-the-water boat show, casting contests, seminars, films, exhibits, 
And the Michigan Duck Hunters Association has several events, including retriever and duck hunting demonstrations. So if you enjoy fishing, hunting, and the shooting sports, bring the whole family to the Outdoor Fair June 27th through the 29th at Houghton Lake. One of the events on our Michigan Outdoors calendar is a perfect dish for this time of year in the winter. A chowder recipe. Kathy, what's the name of it? Simple chowder. Steve's Simple Chowder. Steve Simple Chowder. That's Steve Pazlaski, charter captain we've been out with. Uh, off Oscoda. Good fisherman, good cook, too. And he knows what to do with salmon. You could probably make this with pike or... Trout. Yeah, most, most any type of fish, I think. But we used salmon on it. Right, good salmon. And the salmon should be... It doesn't take very much. It's just enough for one person. Salmon and milk. And there's no thickening, no cornstarch or anything in this. Diced potato, and it's just one potato. This is for one person. Onion, and it's sliced, not diced. Green pepper. And then you're going to fry it in butter. Go saute your vegetables in three tablespoons of butter. Now, this quantity, again, in Jean Pazlaski's cookbook uh, that she did on salmon cookery, she put this recipe just for a serving for one. Right. Only a charter boat captain would come up with that. Okay, go saute your vegetables. You don't want them real done, just browned. The vegetables being the green pepper right, and, and the onion. onions. Uh -huh. I don't think it would hurt if you diced the onion. No, I would prefer it diced. But it... Uh, Tastes fine when oh, the Oh, sure. Doesn't when hurt it in either rings. way. I'm going to add your potatoes to so just a little tiny bit of water. You just want just enough to cover it. So the green pepper and onions are sauteed in butter and in another pot. Right. You're going to put the potato. Then we're going to add the fish to that. Small chunks. Yep. Just serving size pieces. So they break apart easy. Now, just how long do you cook the five fish? Five minutes. Only five minutes because you're going to pour milk into it and then let it cook a little bit longer. Just a little bit of milk, just to give it some good color and flavor. So About a cup, a cup, a cup of right. milk for one serving. One serving, mm -hmm. and you just adjust it accordingly to make it for so a bigger crowd. Multiply the number right. of ingredients. Right, and you add your sautéed vegetables. Like Steve says, it's simple fish chowder. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's and no, there's no corn in it. No, there's no uh, peas, no nothing. No bacon. No bacon is in a lot of chowder, so this is simple. And just a little bit of salt and pepper. Now that's your only seasoning there is. No the seasoning only seasoning. Salt? Well, you, I'm right. sure you could add some more. Well, sure. And now, just let it cook. What do you think they minutes. said about it at Houghton Lake? <laughs> Let's find out. What do you think? It's delicious. Is it? Yes, it is. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Especially on a day like this. Yeah. <laughs> is, is this uh, salmon soup? Is it? Salmon chowder. Salmon chowder. Boy, you mean you were eating it? Just trusting? <laughs> the recipe in the Michigan Outdoors magazine? Oh, yeah. It's in the Digest, the Outdoor Digest. What do you think? I think it's delicious. Do I've you? never tasted chowder before. You haven't? No. It's my first time. What do you think's in it? I don't know, but it looks like onions. It looks great. <laughs> onions, green pepper? Yeah. Excellent. Well, it is? Excellent. We got salmon in it? Oh, yeah. There's salmon in it, all right. Chunks of salmon. But you know what I like best about this is the broth. It's creamy. It, well, it's creamy, and it has the butter in it and the flavorings. It's sort of like a oyster stew broth. Mm -hmm. I really like the taste of that. Oh, yeah. And if you add just, a, I think, a little more pepper to it. I always think of chowder as a little more peppery than this, but uh, excellent ingredients, excellent recipe. You know, up at, up at Tip Up Time, we made some with some salmon that had been in the freezer for a while. Mm -hmm. I think this batch that you made here today, Kathy, with a little fresher steelhead. It does make a difference. Yeah, it does <laughs> taste a little better. But I tell you, excellent recipe, Bob. Thought I'll let him tire out, but he wasn't very tired. He wasn't? He put his head right up through the hole. No kidding? Yeah. You mean he just, just like pulling in a little one? Right. And you slipped him out under the ice all by yourself? Nothing to it. Oh. <laughs> How long did it take? How long was the battle? Maybe a minute. That's an incredible story. I know, a good fish story. <laughs> yeah, it is a good fish story. Well, you are 25 pounds. A master angler fish could very well be the largest northern pike of 1986. To you, Marilyn Heinzelman of Wyoming, congratulations. Thank you. Boy, Thank that you. is a beaut.